is it possible to read a scientific article if you are not a scientific researcher? Is it possible to understand what's in a scientific article if you are just a student or even if you don't have much knowledge on technical aspects that are in the paper? Definitely, in our world, it's very important to be able, in my opinion, to understand science and to understand the content of scientific articles. As I'm showing in many videos like the first TED statistics, even if journalists read the scientific articles, take the information and give you parts of the content of those scientific articles, it's very important to be able to look for yourself because there is a gap between what's in the paper and the understanding of the journalists uh, for other people. So it is super important to be able to look for yourself and understand deeply what is the message and what is really the information included in a scientific article. To do so, I'm going to present you how I'm reading a scientific article and basically a three-level approach to read a scientific article. And this approach will allow you to see what you might be able to do with this article, where to start, what to look for, and this depending on your knowledge and time. The first level will be to just start with very simple information. Basically, you start by reading what you call the abstract, which is the summary of the paper in very few sentences. For some top journals, it's reduced to 100 characters, so very condensed information. And you can already read that. Usually there is very few technical aspects. It's really the main results, the context, what's the sample. And here you already have key informations, and it takes few seconds to read. The thing is, the abstract, as well as the title, are kind of a marketing aspect. You really try to sell the paper. You try to convince the people that it's super useful to bring them to read the paper and potentially to cite the paper. So due to the fact that it's kind of a marketing aspect, you really have to read more to really understand what's the content of the paper. And if you can really, if you really understood what's implied by this abstract. To do so, the next thing to do is to read the introduction. Basically, in the introduction, you have also a big summary of the article, but usually with fewer technicalities. This will be kept for the data and analysis part. So you can read the introduction and usually, again, linked to the time I have to read the paper, I start by the abstract and then I will not fully read the introduction. I will just start by reading the first sentence of each paragraph. So usually papers are made in such a way that you can really just skim to the paper by starting each paragraph and understand more or less what's the contents of each paragraph, what will be said, what's the main results, what's the challenges, what's the, the question answers answered and how it contributes to the literature. Then, if you have a little bit more time, what you will do still in this level one approach is abstract, read fully the introduction, and then the conclusion, because it's also relatively short parts, introduction and conclusion together, but it will, the conclusion will allow you to really understand the big conclusion of the paper, and also it opens the discussion and leads to what's the next step, what's the next question, how this paper contribute to the world to the big picture, usually. This first level is really accessible for a wide majority of people. Of course, if there are some aspects really technical, you can skip those, but try to understand the, the big picture. If you are a journalist, usually you will focus on those parts depending on your level of knowledge. But of course, it depends on the paper. Sometimes the abstract is really difficult to understand, the introduction even worse, so it completely depends. But so that's general rules. Then for the level two, what you will do is really go deeper in the paper and look for the data and analysis. And again, the data is something absolutely key. You can really look for the data and even if you have, again, very little knowledge, you can just try to see the size of the sample, 
And this, even if you don't know statistics, it might be difficult to assess what it really means. But what you could do anyway will be to look at the sample, the year when it has been collected and when the study is, has been made, and where the sample is collected, if it's a specific place geographically or not. And why is it useful to look for those two information, where and when? If you know the where and when the study has been made, you can understand or think about to which extent you can extrapolate the results. For example, if uh, the Swiss uh, newspapers takes a study from the US and you see that actually the sample is from one state in the US in the 50s, you can really question, but can we really apply those results to Switzerland? What would be the differences between the, the US one state in the 50s and Switzerland today? And this is really a key and you, it's really a legitimate question, even if you are not an expert in statistics, to just see if you can really conclude the same as of today in your country or in other place in the world. This is the concept called external validity. Then, of course, if you have the technical knowledge, you will go deep and look for the analysis part and really look for the tables, the statistical methods. And, and what I would say, the level three analysis is really when you are a scientific researcher or maybe a student really working on a project, on a paper, on a literature review, and then you will really go deeper, look for the all the quantifications, the table, do the math, compare the things with other articles in the literature. Look also for other articles that I cited in the, the, the introduction in the literature review. You will look also for the appendix and look for all the tables, the robustness check and so on. And, and so this will take way more time. I would say the level one approach will take between one minute and half an hour, while the level two will maybe take two hours and uh, level three might take a day, half a day, depending on how deep you want to go with the paper. So to summarize, start by reading the title, the abstract. But this is not enough because there is a big aspect of marketing, selling the paper. So go deeper, look for the introduction. You can skim through the introduction, just read a few sentences, the first from each paragraph, to see if that's really what you wanted to read and, 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 and look for. Then you can read fully in the introduction, after that potentially complete by, by looking for the conclusion. Once you have done this, you have very good understanding or a good broad understanding of the paper. Then I will really go to the data and look for the when and where for the sample to understand this question of external validity. Can I apply those results to other situations, maybe my place today? And last but not least, you have the level three where you are usually a scientific uh, researcher and you really go deeper, read all details, redo the computations, compare with other articles, read other articles, and so on. So I really hope this has been useful for you. I think that understanding scientific research is really central and necessary today. It should be even included in your first ed kit of the 21st century. Please ask any question below you have on reading an article. I will be glad to discuss that with you. Cheers.